Today we're going to look at creating an animated GIF using this pixel art free online drawing program. So we just went to file new and we could create it any size you want. I am going to create it at a relatively small size here, 32 by 32 pixels because yes, it's okay to clear whatever else I have. So make sure you've got everything else saved. Uh, I'm going to create it at this size because it is easier to kind of visually measure things. There's not a lot of tools available to like center your objects and things like that. So, and to measure really accurately so other than counting the, the squares here. Okay. So I'm going to create a, a square. I think that's a perfect square and I'm going to put it pretty close to the middle here. Ooh, I think I should have drawn it one bigger. That's all right. We'll keep it like this. And I'm going to fill this in just with another color for fun here. All right. And what I'm going to do is have this thing come down like it's falling and squash at the bottom. And that's about it for right now. All right. So what we're going to be doing is one, don't make it go off of your canvas. When you bring it back, it's going to be gone. We'll undo that. Uh, okay. Lesson learned. So we're going to start by looking down in the bottom here. It says click to toggle frames panel. It says GIF frames. So we're going to create an animated GIF or GIF. Uh, so the file format is going to end with a dot GIF and that will make little animated things. I'm sure you guys have seen animated GIFs before, right? All right. So let's get going. Now I'm going to copy this frame. And now you can see I've got two exactly the same. I can select which one I'm on. I can change how long each one is displayed for. I'm going to keep them all at 100 milliseconds for right now. That's probably a good starting point. And now I'm on the second frame. I'm just going to move this object down and you can see it's showing a kind of a transparent kind of ghost image of the previous one so that we can see what it looked like and where it was. Okay. And I'm going to copy this frame again. And I'm going to move this down even more this time. Like it's getting a little faster. So the first time it only moved down half of the size of this block. And now it's moved down almost the entire block. Let's go one more. I'm going to copy that frame again. And it's going to hit the ground here. And I'm going to copy this one more time. And this time though, it's going to be I'm going to sorry, just set this up so it's black and blue here. I can just switch between these two colors here. Okay, so I'm going to switch to black. I'm going to redraw this square and kind of like this, making sure that they're the same. Let's get rid of that. One, two, three, four on this side, four on this side. There's only three up here. So it's going to look maybe a little too flattened out, but uh, that's okay for this demo. We're not going in that level of uh, detail here for our animation techniques. And it's going to flip and fill this one in. Sorry, undo on a new layer. Here's our layers panel over here. This one is on our back. These are both on the background. Okay. That was a mistake. Undo. Undo. Well, let me go back enough. There we go. Here's the square in the background. Am I still in the right frame? Yeah, this is my duplicate copy of this. These, oh no, it's not. There's that one. Oh yes, it is. Let me see. Does that one, that one? That one, then it's on the ground. And this is the duplicate on the ground. That's what we want. Okay, on this layer, I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm going to draw this time on the separate layer. That was the mistake I made last time. 
Okay, and now we're gonna fill this in. Sorry about the confusion there. We're gonna turn the background layer off. All right, so it's squashed down. And then I'm gonna have it the normal size again. Okay, so I'm gonna take this frame. Let's just preview this right now. Uh, I'll show you what we've got. So this is just gonna loop and continue to fall down like this. You can see it's starting to squash and then it's starting over right away again. So we don't want it to do that. And I do wanna add a few other things here at the end. Okay, so I'm gonna duplicate, copy this frame and I wanna put it after this one. So I'm gonna use this arrow to slide it over. So now it's gonna look like it squashes and then pops back up to its original shape. And then I wanna have it stretch up even further. This is like a squash and stretch effect if you're looking for some more accurate animation lingo here. Um, and so again, on a new layer, I'm gonna have this thing wrong color. Stretch up this way, maybe even bigger. I'm gonna start it up there. And I wanna make that black. I should have drawn it black and it's not centered. And uh, that's just my poor planning by the shape, the size of this thing. I should have made it a little bit one block bigger. I think would have been nicer. Uh, and I'm just gonna fill this in with black. We can do that. And then we're gonna switch back to blue. Make sure we're on our new layer. Yes, fill it in. Get rid of our old one. So now this thing squashes down here and oh, right in between. Sorry, my mistake here. I'm gonna copy this again. I'm gonna slide this over. This will make sense here in a minute. There we go. So it lands on the ground here squashes down back to normal and then stretches up all right there you go and then i'm going to duplicate this one again slide it to the very end so after it stretches up it's going to come back down again and rest at its normal shape okay and then i want it to stay like this i don't want it to start over right again so that we can see it for a longer period of time. So I could copy it a bunch of times, or I could change how long this is displayed for. Okay, and now we'll preview this again. Now it sits there for, well, I think it was 500 milliseconds. Yep, plus the 100, so 600. I think it needs a little more time maybe. And I'd like it to actually disappear completely before it restarts. So I'm going to make this, I don't know if I want it to go quite 5,000 to, I mean, to 1,000. I don't know if I want it to sit there for double that amount of time. So maybe I'll just duplicate this one once or twice. So now it'll sit there. It'll appear to sit there for one, two, three, plus five, 800 milliseconds. And then I want it to disappear before it starts over again. So I'm going to just copy this one more time and you can see it's going to be nothing there right now for 500 milliseconds. I'm just going to turn this layer off so that nothing will be there. 500 might be too long. Let's try it. And it disappears. Uh, that's not so bad. Okay. I think that's all right. So now what we're going to be doing, we want to save it as your blue cube drop. Uh, let's add the word animation. Click OK. So uh, now this is saved to my downloads folder and on another day I can come back in and open this file and it will ask me where and I would find that document and open it back up and continue on working, continue working on that. But when we're actually finished totally, okay, what we're going to do is go to download and you can see this is 
you can see that we've got options here to download this at a different size than we actually created it. We created it at, uh, was it 32 by 32 pixels? And 32 by 32 would be super small. So um, let's, I just wanna show you here. I know it, it says 640 here. We could pick a different size. Let's pick 672 just to change it. And we're gonna make all these the same. We want all the frames and the layers and everything all the same size as each other because that's how we, we made it that way, right? We don't want to have some of them getting bigger and smaller and things like that. And we've got this set here, download PNG or .gif. So it knows it's a GIF because we made an animated GIF. So it automatically selects that for us. And we're going to hit download. And you can see it's, it's going to upsample this image which normally would be a bad idea for a photograph or anything where you wanted to maintain the greatest amount of detail. Uh, however, this is so low res here. We, we're just, it's a big square, right? And we're not really worried about that. It's just a little animated GIF for, to view online. So it doesn't matter that it's scaling it up. You can tell or you can see that it still looks good. Uh, the same as if I were to have drawn it that size. And here's our animation. This is what it would look like in a web browser. You could put this online, social media, on a website or whatever. And this, I believe, will have automatically saved this to my downloads folder. Here it is, blue cube animation.pixel. And then here's the, I'm gonna block this a bit here just so we can there we go see it there as well and if I open it up in a preview window or whatever we've got lots of blue squares falling around all right so you guys are going to create your own animated GIF try and do something maybe a little more interesting than a, a cube falling although this is sort of a standard kind of beginning animation problem or challenge to do this squash and stretch effect with a cube or with a, a sphere or ball. Um, but let's see if you guys can be a little more inventive than that. If you're really stuck for something, go for this just to show that you know how to do it, all right? Give yourself a little confidence before you try something else maybe if you're struggling with that. Okay.